Okay, now something I need to mention here. We're going to be going back and forth between these windows a few times, at least a few times. So generate your uh, measurement from predicted there. We can <clears throat> hide the original vectors because we're not looking at them at the moment. Uh, but I want to do what I want to do is analyze these. Okay, so let me change this to a red really quickly just so I don't drive myself color crazy. Um, all right, so I have my left and right predicted vector responses. Okay, now I can't analyze them properly by looking here. What I need to do is open overlays, go into GD here, which stands for group delay. Okay, right click here. Clear selections. Scroll down to the bottom, and I only want to look at these two vector responses. All right, now keep in mind that here, this one, number 21, and this one over here, number 22, those are my vector measurements. Those are my averages. Those are the ones that contain the filters that create what I'm looking at right here. So 23 and 24. Uh, these are the group delays of the two channels. My objective is to match these up as closely as possible. Obviously, we've still got a little bit of deviation here, and we have a little deviation here. This is looking okay. I'm not going to worry too much about this, uh, but we could probably uh, drop the right channel down a little bit here. We're going to drop the left channel here, and we're going to drop the right channel here. Okay. Now, I know that's left and right because my left response is red, and my right response is blue. This is uh, one of the main reasons why I am such a strong advocate of color coding. I don't have to guess. If I don't know what the color is, I don't have to look down here and figure it out. My left channel is always red. My blue is always right. Or right is always blue. Okay. So I, just by looking at this, I can tell. My right channel needs to come down here at 348. And my left channel needs to come down here at 213. So let's just do one at a time. Let's start with the left channel. So 213, keep that in mind. We're going to come back to vector L, go back into filters. Now I have three slots, okay? So 213. Now I'll uh, move this over so I can see what I'm doing. 213 is right here, roughly. So all I need to do is make this dip deeper. All right, so that's what I'm doing with 213. Okay, so I'll just leave the uh, the bandwidth at 10, and I'll just drop this by something like 8. All right, now I'm just going to leave it like that. Generate a new measurement from predicted, because now I have a, a different filter. Close this. Come back into the overlays. Oh, well, before I do that, let me let me do this. I'll put the left one together, and I'll give this a, uh, a red, pink, whatever color. Now, go back to overlays. Uh, what I should see now is the two left measurements, and you can see the difference right there at 213, okay? This one I don't need anymore. Now this one looks like it lines up almost perfectly, and that was... I just guessed, okay, but it looks like I nailed it, all right? This is, is perfect. What I need to do now is drop the right channel down so that it matches this. I don't want to boost anything, okay? The idea is to be dropping. So whichever one is higher, drop it down and, and line it up with the low one, okay? So here we have 344, 345, roughly. And this is the right channel, all right? So close this. Let me get rid of that original response. Don't need it. Now my right channel, that's going to be vector R here, this one. Come back into the filters. And provided that you haven't forgotten what the number was, <laughs> I think it was, so I'm going to have to go look at it again. Hold on. Forgot what the number was. Overlays. 344. Okay. Some of us are numerically challenged, and we are okay with this. All right. 344. I'm going to leave this at 10, and I'm just going to drop this by about 8 dBs and see where it ends up. Oops. 
before I do this, I have to generate a new measurement from predicted, then I close this. Okay, so now I have my left one, and I have my original right one, and I have my new right one, which is kind of green, and that works okay for right now. So let's hide the original one and see where we are. So now I have the pink and the green responses, and it looks like they're pretty much on target. Okay, so you see how I've lined up the group delays. Uh, the rest of this is looking okay. I mean, I, I don't have to worry about this too much. It's This is what you want. You want it to look like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to try to get it as close as you can. Okay, don't worry about this down here. Uh, first of all, I happen to know that my speaker response here uh, only goes down to about 40, maybe 44 or 45, somewhere in this region here. So all this stuff down here, I can't even hear. My speakers can't even reproduce that. So... I'm not even going to worry about that. What I'm worried about is from this point up. Okay, nice, even, cohesive group delay. Okay, now if I look at the step, uh, step response of this, let's see what that looks like. Again, I want vector L MP and I want vector R MP. Now compare this, this nearly perfect pulse response it's a little off here, it's a little off here. And if I wanted to, I could go in and mess with the group delay a little bit more, try to offset it, and try to get this to sound right. Um, but um, that would make this tutorial extremely long, and I just want to get the basic gist of what's going on in here, okay? So you want these to line up, and you want this to line up as closely as possible. So I invite you to go ahead and experiment with that. And just by adjusting, all you have to do is is clear all these out, okay, and then adjust your vector responses, okay. Let's say that this is good. Just for the sake of example and, and to move the tutorial forward, I'm going to just go ahead and say that what I have is good, all right. So make sure that your filters um, are organized, right? So hit this button, make sure your filters are organized, and uh, generate your final measurement from predicted. Close this. Let's give it its final color, and we'll just say, we'll, we'll make the name official now. Predicted Vector L MP. And, uh, of course, uh, it's got to be some sort of reddish or pinkish color. And then vector RMP. Generate final measurement from predicted here. And then we'll just go ahead and finish this up. Okay, now we make this some sort of blue or purple. Okay. Now let's recap. What I have are correction filters, uh, amplitude correction filters, or magnitude correction filters for my left speaker. I have magnitude slash amplitude correction filters for my right speaker. I have vector filters created. My predicted response for the vector filters is here with the group delays lined up. All right. The next thing I want to do is create an excess phase copy. If I could actually click on this, I want to create an excess phase copy of this. Okay, now the way to do that is to come over to controls and measurement actions, all right? Now, if you don't see this here, it's possible that you're on some other tab, all right? So just make sure you're on all SPL. Um, measurement actions, make sure this is selected. You'll see it here. And then what we're going to do is create an excess phase version. Once again, keeping the cal file effect included. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my right excess phase version. Make excess phase copy. So now what I have is a predicted vector L MP dash EP, which stands for excess phase. This EP is excess phase. Then I have one for the right speaker as well. Okay, uh, the next thing to do is to generate a minimum phase copy 
of each of these. So with this one selected, minimum phase copy. Include effects, and then predicted vector RMP EP is going to get its own minimum phase copy. Okay, now from here, you have options, all right? The following steps can be performed using either the excess phase copies or the minimum phase excess phase copies. Okay, you'll get slightly different results. Uh, almost imperceptible if you don't have good enough speakers, but uh, you, you definitely will get slightly different results based on which set of these that you actually end up using. Okay, so let's just go ahead with my minimum phase copies of my excess phase copies <laughs> of my predicted vector responses. All right, so basically these last two here. All right, select the first one, go to file, export, export measurement as text. Okay, uh, this is very important. Use the default settings for each of these, okay, except for this one. Okay, use custom smoothing, no smoothing. I don't want to apply an additional layer of smoothing over top of what I've already done. That would not be good. Okay, we want to leave everything just the way it is. So use custom smoothing, no smoothing. Say okay. Okay, excess phase. Okay, so now I have excess phase. What I'm going to do is go ahead into this folder and I'm just going to call this um, excess phase dash MP left. All right, this one, select it. Go to export text, make sure this is no smoothing and the other uh, options are default, say okay. Excess phase MP right. And save that. 